Okay, friends, hello, my name is Alexander Stockman, and uh, today we're gonna talk about Godot and its performance, uh, like um, performance in the 3D, uh, in 3D scenes with the characters. Here I have uh, two sample projects, let me run this one. Uh, one project is on uh, is written on the script second one is uh, overwritten uh, using c sharp oh, wait a second until it's run it's godot 3.51 uh, uh, or something you 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 can see the version in here hope obs will record it well i don't know this is the descript version and here we have uh, 40 NPCs no, not NPCs but just characters uh, there are 40 of them as you can see and if we go to the debugger we can go to the monitor and we can see our FPS frame rate in here let's return and right now we have 41 FPS uh, for 40 uh, characters, no optimizations applied. Uh, and if we move our FPS, we will uh, obviously go down to 20 or something like that. And of course, our process time uh, is increasing and decreasing depending on our movement. Uh, so this is actually a problem because having uh, such low performance as 20 FPS with only 40 characters and our scene has 40 characters uh, yes it, it has shadows but shadows do not affect which is surprising but uh, shadows do not affect the resulting fps and uh, i will show you what will affect um, so of course uh, having like uh, such low fps with uh, only 14 npcs is uh, bad right and uh, I tried to solve this situation by overwriting all my code uh, to C sharp because uh, the script is uh, interpret interpreted language and it's kind of not that good uh, maybe not that good uh, and um, of course I probably should show you the character class itself uh, character works based on the state machine it has different states inside of it and it can change that states at any moment at any time for example if we go we can go to the jump state and we can go to the stop movement start movement all things like that are here uh, also character has controller inside of it e all of them has player controller and uh, because of that all of them move uh, together uh, they doesn't have a controller because I didn't made it yet. Uh, I just wanted to see the performance of the characters itself. Uh, code is well, I can't say it's very good, but it will do. Of course, we have uh, like um, some raycasts to detect uh, small obstacles, like uh, like show you where is it, like uh, the small steps this step it can it can smoothly enter to this step and to this step but it can't enter to, to the second one because uh, it's uh, too big okay. uh, there is limits that you can set uh, to just know uh, which actually uh, distance you can automatically pass uh, this is the angle and uh, step height 0.35 meters um, okay um, we have player controller inside of it player controller has just camera and screen arm on it just pretty simple 3d player controller it doesn't have any collisions inside of it it just gets attached to the main character and it just works like this so uh, the character itself is uh, defined by the skin uh, and kind of there is two versions of the character female and male uh, and one of them is hidden 
all this uh, actually these uh, these elements like cloth like uh, the skin itself does not affect I tested it does not affect that much and for example if we hide uh, like a female and if we enable the male uh, male has a little bit lower uh, amount of uh, polygons on it and all these characters are actually from my uh, like I made animations recently like not recently uh, in the beginning of this year and um, I just made these two characters to see and all of them uh, kind of low poly but uh, it's not that much of a low, low poly it's just um, it's just okay for the polygon count and uh, I just don't care about it because it's just uh, for the test purposes maybe but this character has uh, they has fully functional hands of course uh, there is no fingers on the legs because well, it doesn't need it uh, but they has like uh, eyes and eyes here are uh, not not ri ring uh, not spherical they are like uh, like this as you can see and well let's continue to our project uh, it's dotnet version and here we go let's test uh, the performance with the mail just uh, to show you that it will not change nothing will change if you will uh, kind of Godot pretty well performs uh, with uh, 3d models uh, which is actually very good uh, and it, 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 it doesn't matter for Godot uh, for the polygon count unless you have like uh, hundred polygon counts with a lot of more targets these characters doesn't have any more targets on them of course so uh, there will be no resulting effect like uh, it will still 20 fps during movement and it will something around 40 fps during idle um, my my project is run on hard disk drive it's not uh, SSD so uh, it's it's a bit laggy because of that we have 57 frames per, per second and if we move it should fall down to 20 10 to 22 maybe with the mail it's a bit uh, better but uh, who knows actually uh, I didn't tweak it weights because well it's not about weights uh, the rig itself here is uh, Autoric Pro with small tweaks uh, Autoric Pro doesn't allow you for example to uh, export with a root bone Autoric Pro uh, can bake root motion but it cannot export root bone itself I had to make my own script in the Python in the Blender to uh, export it with the root ball and uh, this is uh, Autoric Pro with uh, small tweaks like root bone and stuff like that uh, okay now let's uh, see what performance we will have in uh, uh, C sharp version of this uh, project I uh, of course uh, did not satisfy it with the 22 FPS and with 14 NPCs it's uh, low amount and I tried to solve it by changing the language and here we have uh, I think it's .NET version uh, and it's fully overwritten all the scripts uh, all the things uh, is on C sharp here all the scripts are on C sharp and all this is applied even to the states to everything in here this is C sharp and C sharp is uh, kind of better in my opinion uh, and it's actually better on the performance uh, but it's not that much better of course Senna also has here uh, 40 NPCs uh, this is all the same all the same characters inside of it uh, and it, it also reports you state changes like uh, the script version it's just uh, accurately the same uh, C sharp I, I didn't written C sharp in here in the Godot editor instead I just used my uh, Visual Studio code 
to uh, read a C sharp because it's better to have Visual Studio Code instead. So let's see. It's also run on hard disk drive and uh, where is it actually? Let's go. And let's see, go to the debugger, go to the monitors, and let's monitor the FPS again and let's see how it will behave. Uh, as you can see, uh, though it's just 25 FPS, uh, in the get escape version we have like 22, I think. Here we have like 24, 25. Uh, it's anyway, it's not enough, uh, as you can see, even though C sharp is better and it's giving it is giving us like a better 3 or like 5 fps uh, but it's still bad and uh, it's actually still bad and uh, i was not uh, kind of i i don't like it uh, i don't like the performance gain uh, that i got from uh, changing the language itself uh, so, some will say that I should optimize, for example, my scripts, script code, but there is nothing to optimize, obviously. Uh, it's very simple. You just apply a linear and um, <laughs> velocity to the rigid body. These all characters are rigid bodies, and it just works like this. There is nothing to optimize. And, um, well, I just starting to think what to do in this type of situation and how it can be changed, how we can actually optimize our character. Let's go to the get script version. Uh, it it's actually doesn't matter because optimizations are applied in both of them. Uh, and uh, le let me show you optimizations that I did. Uh, because get script is slightly better to read than uh, C sharp. If we go to the skin, we can see that our skin has uh, kind of this parameter half update rate which allows us uh, which allows us uh, to what is it to actually half the update rate of our uh, animation tree and that actually helped because um, but first of all of course we need to set the process mode uh, by default it's idle uh, you can set it to the physics or you can set it to the manual and if you set it to the manual, it will stop to update you. It, it, it won't update, it won't work here. If I will, uh, for example, go to the physics, it will start to work. But if you go to the manual, uh, this thing will stop to work. And uh, you will need manually to advance your animation tree. And here we have um, anim tree. Uh, uh, inside of the ready function, I'm just setting it to the manual. Uh, this is just you know, uh, we can restore it just, just to have normal behavior in here uh, and it will be applied in here anyway so uh, what is wh what I do next is I have this time limit variable let me just move it to top and this time limit variable uh, kind of allows us to uh, have to update uh, our animation of on our character with uh, half of the process FPS. Uh, I don't know how to name it, but uh, we just let me show you the code after it's saved. Uh, it's hard disk drive and it's slow. Uh, as you can see, on's time limit uh, is bigger than delta multiplied by 2. This is how often it will advance the animation tree, it will update the animation, it will apply the animation <coughs> oh, sorry. it will apply the animation and uh, it will allow us to uh, see the animation inside of the game uh, so let's trigger this inside of our rigid character, we can go to the skin and half update rate if we apply it and if we press play now let's wait until it runs because yeah it's slow 
uh, it will uh, actually give us better FPS because our uh, skin now updates uh, less uh, in it, it, it doesn't update like every frame it updates uh, kinda less often and that will actually give us very good uh, amount of uh, performance of the character performance let, let's, let me show you the bugger and monitors and let's go to, the, to here and if we move our FPS will stay as you can see we still moving and FPS like not falling down to the uh, 20 it's 30 it's 30 it's uh, almost gone uh, it's gone to the 40 uh, so uh, with the same amount of NPCs we have a uh, little little bit uh, less kind of uh, we but since uh, update rate is not uh, uh, kind of it's half it's it's not that visible but of course it's visible and it's not recommended to apply uh, such optimization methods to all of your characters uh, it's possible to apply that optimization methods to the NPCs that are far away from of, of from our character and yes there is uh, kind of root motion applied uh, it's all working <coughs> so um, using this method we can actually op optimize uh, our character and uh, as you can see uh, you kind of just by halving this and using advance inside of the animation tree we actually optimized it very well and if we put here for example tree it will be of course more visible but it will give us even better performance Let me just, let's test that out of course the same results will be on the C-sharp version and I will show you that later uh, as, as you can see uh, C-sharp version doesn't give us that much uh, of uh, win uh, on a performance comparing to the script version I actually expected from C-sharp something better but uh, thing is that character performance does not depend on the scripts itself if you apply for example uh, in scripts just the forces it doesn't uh, affect it doesn't matter where you apply your forces inside of the GD script or inside of the uh, C sharp it's anyway will work the same uh, and it's now uh, three times kind of uh, often and let's see our monitors and as you can see the default FPS from 15 is grown up to the 64 uh, 66 or oh, 70 and during movement it will drop to the 46 or something as you can see uh, using just this simple method by halving the update rate of our animation tree we can uh, move our FPS uh, kind of our characters bigger uh, may make FPS of our characters bigger uh, how we can optimize it even more well uh, to optimize it even more like and we still have like 40 NPCs on the scene uh, we want if we want to optimize it even more we can just go here and hide this skeleton like this we will we will not have it uh, uh, you have to see it right a second uh, working in hard disk drive and recording in the same time is actually a pain uh, because yeah, right now is OPS is active and probably that uh, causes some stutters and some lags, of course, as well. Because uh, it just has to record and it has to save everything. And if you hide this, there is in the script there is check if anim3 is not active there if you didn't know in anim in, an, in anim3 you can have this active thing and or if it's if armature is not visible uh, it just will not proceed it will not advance and it will just we will have now the empty scene Let, let's let's see how it will look like and uh, this empty scene or fps will go very very high 
since we're not updating over this state machine, we do not update in our animation tree, we do not update in our skeleton, it will just go very very high. Uh, let me show you. So, uh, wait a second, of course it's not like in Unity. Uh, Unity uh, allows you to give, uh, to get biggest kind of like very good performance with uh, many uh, characters and as you can see here is like 200, uh, 256 maybe during movement and all this is working as you can see we are moving we have uh, all traces, all the collisions, we can move up in here uh, like this we cannot move in the second step of course uh, so this is the way of solving this uh, problem for the big amount of NPCs so what do I mean? for example NPCs that are not visible currently to the player like maybe player just doesn't see them they can be hidden using uh, just they can be hidden and uh, using uh, algorithm that I shown you uh, they can be optimized and if you if they are not visible they will not advance and their animation tree will not update and that will lead uh, to uh, the invisible NPCs to kind of not affect your performance at all or affect it very slightly um, this is still get the script, it's not C-sharp version and uh, in C-sharp if you hide the skeleton you will get like a lot bigger FPS if we just deactivate our animation tree and we can do that as well as I already told you, uh, if it's not active it will give you um, kind of... It, it, it will give you not that big amount of FPS because it will still drop characters will still drop shadows, characters will still um, have, like, have to render and uh, games still have to render them and uh, le let's see what will happen they all will be in t-pose and uh, this is an option actually to uh, reset an animation tree on the, on the invisible NPCs and uh, just to put them in t-poles until a uh, player comes close to them and uh, kind of see them and you just uh, get rid of the t-poles you just apply it animation to the NPCs wait a second now as you can see they are all in t-poles and if we go to the debugger uh, we go to the monitors as you can see it will just 57 uh, but if we move as you can see since our animation is not updating at all and updating only the rigid body's position uh, we have like uh, the same uh, our FPS are actually they do not affect our FPS that much and since they are rendering they affect of course to the uh, like to the entire FPS but um, and there is one moment if we just take up all the crowd we will have like 55 and if we just try somehow to um, and as you can see FPS change it to 72 uh, so the amount of NPCs that is on your screen currently is affecting your frame rate as you can see uh, it directly affects to that uh, let's just deactivate it um, let's see what will how, how it looks in the C sharp. It's the same code actually. It just allows you half to half on the update rate, and it will kind of as you can see here is advanced thing, and of course our animation tree is it's it doesn't matter. We just change it to mono inside of here, not inside of here, and. Um, what do I wanted to show you about well, the difference difference between uh, kind of le let's just halve the rate and see how it will if we halve half an update rate inside of the uh, C sharp version of the project let's see how much it will uh, affect our performance this all scripts are on C sharp and this probably will run 
slightly faster, but it has some strange bug with uh, some I don't know what type of bug it is. Uh, sometimes it just cannot read some things, as you can see. Uh, okay, let's ignore that. It's loaded, and let's scroll this one. Go to the bugger. Go to the monitors, and. This is the sharp version, and if we move this half an update rate, it gives us like 40 FPS. This half an, uh, this kind of, you know, uh, I already told. Um, also, uh, for also uh, uh, root motion can affect your uh, resulting frame rate. For example, if we enter clean locomotion we will see that our FPS grown up uh, and this will happen every time when you use uh, root motion somehow somehow um, somehow uh, here inside of the um, animation tree root motion buzzed blend spaces root motion buzzed state machines uh, they are perform better than state machines that are kind of based on based on the kind of velocity driven. Okay, uh, since uh, inside of the root motion we drive our character using uh, in inside of the root motion we drive our character with uh, our inputs. Um, no, it's C sharp. Actually, uh, where is it? Actually, actually, we can have we we drive our character with uh, our inputs and with, with our root motion. We just uh, kind of it, it will give you better performance. So uh, here is adva is uh, next. Ad advice, let's say, uh, do not use velocity driven locomotion, use rot motion driven rock locomotion if you can. I cannot, for example, I don't want to use uh, uh, velocity driven locomotion because there is a reason. We just a bit, yeah. we don't need to help on this. Let's just, uh, it actually doesn't matter. Uh, let, let me show you something. Uh, in rot motion driven locomotion, uh, even with rigid body or without, you cannot uh, drive uh, the animation by the rigid body. <laughs> it's uh, le let me show you how it will look like inside of the scene itself. Since this is velocity driven locomotion, we can come to this cube, stay here, and there is it. And we will actually move. It, this cube will actually move us. As you can see, we are actually moving backwards or forwards. Um, and since it's velocity driven, it will just accurately uh, do that. But in road motion, this type of approach is impossible. So if you have uh, like root motion in here, it's just impossible. And it will still walk in the input direction. Because uh, root motion movement is bound to the uh, input. And this type of situation you have in any engine. In Unreal you will have this type of situation with root motion. In, like in Unity you have. Uh, and Unity will give you probably better performance with uh, 40 NPCs on the scene, I think. Unreal will give you the same or almost the same uh, performance on the scene. Uh, why is that? And wha what problem is that in here, inside of the Godot, you can just hide, for example, your skeleton and your uh, FPS, your frame rate will be uh, like a lot higher, like 200, 
56 maybe we seen the FPS that we, we saw and in Unreal it doesn't matter if you you, you can gain little FPS by hiding your character uh, but in Unreal uh, you still kind of get stuck inside of the game loop and uh, displaying in Unreal like in Unreal Engine 5 even I'm tested it uh, even with hidden NPCs without this mesh uh, even just by placing capsules inside of your level uh, you cannot get uh, frame rate kind of with 40 NPCs uh, you cannot get frame rate bigger than uh, 20 I or I it will be probably even lower somehow uh, so Godot in this place is slightly better than Unreal because in Godot you can just optimize your scene by hiding out your NPCs and this will actually affect your frame rate uh, or you can just half an update rate of your uh, NPC mesh and this will affect your frame rate in Unreal you can apply there is setting to uh, update animation uh, op optimally I, I don't know how it's named uh, I don't remember uh, there is that setting but it doesn't help you anyway uh, so making like 40 NPCs in Unreal probably impossible uh, making having like uh, 200 NPCs even with uh, like hidden let's just hide like this this is impossible in Unreal but it is possible in Godot let me show you um, and it will be even better inside of the Unity because Unity uh, has some features for that I don't, don't remember how it's named uh, ECS or something no not M, no not not entity but data data whatever I don't remember it how, how it's named but uh, there you probably get even bigger FPS um, one of the problems inside of the Godot this is uh, 3.5 is that a Godot has very poor physics and it doesn't have like distraction it doesn't have integrated things like you have for example in Unreal or in Unity Godot doesn't have those uh, in Godot you but uh, Godot also it has its own advantages let's go to the debugger and go to the monitor and as you can see we have just simple 200 and whatever it is NPCs are invisible, maybe they are staying behind the wall, maybe they are in this, if you make a city, they maybe uh, kind of stay in their homes uh, by doing some things uh, and this still, uh, but they can still exist in the game world, they can still do something or like uh, inside, if you remember the Skyrim, you could just uh, send Lydia out of your party and say, Lydia go home okay and Lydia would just from any place if you from for example in Riften it would just go to the white run uh, in, into its home and you can actually after five minutes for example get out of Riften and by moving by the road you, you could uh, fo fo find Lydia and you could uh, just meet here in the road I, my English is not that good, but uh, you probably understand the idea. Uh, in Godot, you can do the same thing. You can just um, kind of make your all NPCs inside of the world alive uh, and just hide them using just visibility thing, and uh, or and you can you can display be before your character, before your player, uh, crowds of NPCs by uh, just. Um, you manipulating this uh, animation tree advance as you uh, as I shown you uh, because this is uh, one of the ways uh, actually of solving this problem um, of course it's not like 100 or in GTA in GTA 5 5 I think in GTA 5 you can have like 115 like uh, like this amount of NPCs on like uh, low PC before your eyes and it won't affect your frame rate somehow uh, it not that much in GTA uh, things like 
that are possible in the GTA engine are of course not possible inside of the Godot. They are not possible inside of the Unreal, of course. It's impossible, I think. Even though there are Matrix demo with uh, kind of C++ driven, uh, I don't, don't remember how it's named, but uh, right now it's in alpha stage or in beta stage, so until they fix it, so it will take time and uh, if we talk about just solid characters, just uh, like this, uh, it's impossible in Unreal to have such things. Uh, in Unity it's possible. In Unity you can display on front of your character like characters, like uh, 70 characters maybe. In you, you, you can do a lot of them. And uh, that is because Unity has better physics, it has slightly better physics, but uh, in exchange uh, Unity is uh, fully C-sharp driven. And uh, C-sharp is good language, of course, Godot has it, but uh, it's not interpreter language, and it is important, uh, for me at least. Uh, and because of that I will keep using GDScript, even though GDScript gives us slightly, like, to, from 5 to 3 FPS uh, lower than uh, what we will get uh, inside of the C Sharp, uh, still I will, I don't think that this is huge, uh, huge advantage of the C Sharp, like, 3 FPS is not that much. Uh, and the main bottleneck in here is because the main bottleneck in here is the animation tree. Maybe uh, some devs uh, like who contribute to the Godot uh, to the Godot repository, maybe they can look inside of this animation tree and find out how it can be improved, how, it, how, how its performance can be impro improved. But right now, you can just use this advance, and this will help. And of course, this animation tree has needs a lot of things to do, because, for example, you cannot duplicate nodes in here. It's just impossible. I, I can't press Ctrl D in here. If I press Ctrl D in here, see what's happened. <laughs> you see, you, you're seeing that, right? Uh, it's just impossible to duplicate it. Uh, it's possible only to delete it. There is no way of duplicating it, and there is no way of uh, saving its resource and then loading it with so resource back. Uh, the only way, kinda, and this is actually really painful, because for example if you want uh, to duplicate your locomotion state machine and then just replace its animations inside, uh, like for example here I have BS movement, right? And maybe I just want to go here and replace this animation to clean, right? or uh, to uh, crouching or something like that. If I want that, I would, uh, I cannot duplicate it. I just can't duplicate it. I can't duplicate it in here. If I press Ctrl D, it will duplicate me this. <laughs> this is very painful. This is very bad. And uh, will it change one day or not? I don't know. I am programmer myself, and sometimes I think maybe I should go to the Godot sources, find out why it's impossible to duplicate these stupid nodes, and just to make it work. But um, well, I don't, I, I don't think that it will give me any good. Uh, so I will not do that. Right now, I'm not an, in the situation where I can just freely go and contribute to <laughs> something. Uh, so let's let, let, let's have a hope that someone will in one day uh, give us here just simple duplication or at least I, I don't tell telling about copying nodes but at least duplicate how I was to duplicate in it. Uh, so this is uh, what we'll get. Uh, it's not Godot 4. I uh, actually, I don't know what Godot, don't know what Godot 4 uh, beta, and Godot 4 beta is um, ma it, it just destroys my mesh. It just makes this mesh into a mess. It somehow conflicts with the rig itself, and it will take some time to figure out why it just does it and what 
is happening. Uh, I did not import it as uh, FBX. It's uh, uh, it's it's not FBX imported. It's imported from uh, to name it. I don't remember. Uh, let let's go to the assets and see. It. Yeah. Assets, characters, hopefully models, and we will have G GLDB. This is uh, export from the Blender itself. Uh, okay, uh, let's hope uh, this my tutorial. It's not tutorial. It's just uh, uh, my. Um, I don't know how to name it. It's just uh, my uh, things about. Uh, Godot performance for the characters and hope this helps to someone. Okay, that's all.